All right, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, recursion. So we've got assignment seven here. Uh, this is a really, really great example uh, because uh, there are two recursive calls uh, back to back. Uh, so this is really a difficult example. So hopefully we can we can go through this, and by the end of this video, uh, we can all understand. Uh, this assignment uh, and, and recursion uh, in general and how to think about it. So uh, how do we think about recursion? Let's just talk about that first. So here's our recursive uh, function. It calls itself twice, we know that. Basically, the best, the best way to think about recursive functions is to just think about what does the recursive call return? What does this thing return? This thing returns some integer after recursively calling itself a ton of times, or however many times, an arbitrary number of times. So this is simply going to return some integer value. And this is going to return some integer value. And the reason why we want to just think about that, I mean, that's, that's actually really simple. We're not even thinking about recursion, really. Um, the only, the only special thing that we really need to think about recursion, calling recursive, uh, making recursive calls, is that our we need to have some sort of base case. That's really the only special thing we need to think about. It. Otherwise, uh, we can think about just calling some other function. Maybe this isn't recursive. Maybe this is function, function two and function three. And now it's not even confusing. All I did was change the name to some other function. But really, it's the same exact thing. It's just calling itself and we need to make sure that the input is reduced so that way we can actually end up stopping this recursion and then actually getting out of this this little uh, recursive loop that we have going on so that's really it. Um, it it's it's way too difficult to think about recursion line by line and then you get to the recursive call and now you start thinking recursively and then you're just lost eventually so this is the best way to think about it, is just don't think about it, really. Just think that uh, you have to recursively call it with a lesser value. That's it. So in this assignment, uh, basically, it's a, it's a pretty simple uh, simple program that we have here. We just get some sort of integer. We just get an integer from the, uh, from the user. We do some crazy stuff with that integer in our recursive function. And we print out the result of that, uh, this, recursive, uh, this recursive function. So let's try and implement this. So here's our main, our main function here. It's, uh, you know, we do all of our print, print out the string, print, uh, get the user input. We put that input into our argument register, which is a zero, and then we're about to call the function. So we do our our stack, um, our stack operations here, our initial stack operations, and then we call the function, and then we undo what we put on the stack. And then, uh, afterwards, we can print print this all out. You know, we have to move v zero into or the return into some register because we need to overwrite uh, v zero a few times here for our system call. So we just save it somewhere, and then we're done. That's all. That's all main really does. That's that's the easy part is writing the main. Now, one thing to think about is the uh, why do we do these stack things here? Why do we choose to put all of our stack operations right before our function call, and then all of our undo, or all of our undoing of the stack operations right after the function call? Uh, because I think some of us have seen, at least, uh, that some of our functions that we've written in class and stuff do these kinds of stack operations at the very beginning of the function, which is a weird thing to think about, um, and it's kind of confusing when you compare two different functions that don't do that uh, as we have here and the reason that we do that in a function like main is because we're only jumping away from we're not recursively calling main that's that's really the reason why we do this um, really we can keep it all in one section and that that guarantees us that you know we did everything right we 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 not only uh, manipulated the stack, but we, we put it back to its original state. So that's really the, 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 the motivation behind this. And the, the same thing would happen 
for a, any other function that is not recursive. Okay, you, if, you, if you're going to jump away from any function, you can do it just like this, just like put it, grouping all of these operations together. Okay, so our main function is, is the easy one. Those are the, just a bunch of system calls, and that's about it. So over in our function one, uh, like, I, like I was just talking about, is that since we know that it's recursive, we can put all of our stack operations right at the beginning, and this kind of saves us from having to think about what to put on the stack later on. Um, unless, of course, if we were going to call some other function, like right here, if we were going to call function 2, like we kind of did over here, if we did like a function 2, then we could do what we just did in main and group those little those those stack operations and the function call together because they're they're their own little entity so we can do that but in this case we're only using recursive calls so we just need to put this at the beginning so another uh, good idea uh, is to once you once you write all of this and you know what you're gonna what you're gonna save on the stack which we'll talk about in just a second it's a good idea to create a return section at the bottom of your uh, function, your recursive function, that undoes all of the stack operations and then returns. Just like we did over here. We did this first. We did a bunch of stuff in between where we over, we did a bunch of overriding of, of, of this. That's why we stored this. And then we got it back right after we're done with it. So in this case, we did the same thing. We store a bunch of stuff on the stack that we know is going to be overridden. And then when we're done with all of that stuff in the, in the middle, we undo, we, we get everything back off the stack, everything that we had before. So let's start at the top. So we, we, we've, we can, we now, now we know that we can enter and exit our function, our recursive function successfully. So we can start with a base case. The base case is, is, is a pretty simple one. If our input, our, our n, is uh, less than 3, in this case less than or equal to 2, which would be less than 3, um, then we want to uh, do this. If Now, if this is false, if this little statement is false, meaning that uh, this ended up being 0, so if these are 0, then we want to branch down to our else uh, statement and uh, execute the code within that uh, within that block. So there's our, our little if statement right there in, in two lines. Then we can do uh, the body of that if statement, which is we just return one. So we put one into our return uh, register, and we return. And all of this return stuff is taken care of. We're already done with that. We don't need to think about it. So otherwise, if that's not the case, then we can do all this. Now here's our recursive calls. Here's the tough part. And to make it uh, easy, to make it simple, just don't think about recursion. So we need to do need to pass in n minus two. So we take two away from it, and we call that function call. We don't need to worry about uh, any of the stack because this function takes care of its own stack operations by itself. It takes care of all of it. So we know that this is going to be called and it's going to return some value into v0. And then in here we can kind of group this into pieces. We can group this first part, this first portion, and then we can group this second portion. And then we're going to add 15 to the sum of those two portions and return it. So here we're going to put the uh, this first result like we talked about early on in this video that we're going to need to save this because this is going to be overwritten when this recursive call gets called. Okay, So we need to put that in S1 and luckily we're saving S1 on the stack every time we actually call this function. So when we call, when we put this into S1 and we we uh, take n down uh, by 3 by this time, we, we already took 2 away so we just need to take 1 more away and we recursively call again Right away, the first thing that's going to happen when we call this is that we're going to save this value and a couple of other things like n, like our, our actual n value and, and everything else. So that way we're safe. After that, uh, so after this function call uh, returns, this recursive call returns, we know that the return value of this will be in v0. 
and then we can multiply it by 7, which we have here, 7, multiply by 7, take it out. And then we can add these two uh, sections together, which is S1, we saved that first one in S1. And then we saved that second one into T3. And then we add, or we store that into T4, and we add 15 to it, to this entire thing. And we put that in V0, that's our return address, and then we obviously have the next thing is return. So we return and we're done. That's all there that's all there is to it. So again, when you think about recursion, you kind of don't need to think about it. All you you really need to think about the important parts about it. One, we know we need to uh, send in a, a reduced value of our input. That's that's the first thing. Second thing, we need to make sure uh, we need to find out some things that we need to save on the stack. So again, we saved this little section. We found out we need to save this because we've got another recursive call right after this that needs this, this entire value, that needs this thing. And this recursive call, remember, is this entire thing again. So meaning this is going to get overwritten with all of its information. So we need to save this. The reason, actually really quick, that we don't save this one is that because there's no other recursive calls afterwards. We just use this right away, right when we're done. There's nothing else to save on the stack. We actually just return. There's nothing, there's nothing else. So we don't need to save this section. Just need to save this one. So we save that there. We saved our n for the same reason, because we need n minus 2 here. And we need n minus 3 here. But again, this is going to overwrite the one for this one, and then it's going to be a big mess. So we need to just save it because we're going to do two recursive calls like this. So hopefully that uh, kind of clears some things up. You can watch this video um, as many times as you need. But just remember, uh, don't think too hard about recursion. It's just a function call. And, uh, you know, in this case, this is a tough one because we need to save, we need to save it a, a couple of times. You need to save its own return value onto the stack. That's all we really had to do. All right.